Some discourse that we should uh, take into consideration in regards to this ayah. First of all, we find a hadith in regards to the other kind of angels, the ones that protect. Allah says in the hadith, or the messenger says in the hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَكَّلَ بِالرَّحِمِ مَلَكًا Allah has installed, even in the wombs, angels. He has appointed angels to guard and protect, even in the wombs. From that time, we are not alone, and, for, uh, and then forth. The other thing, حِفْظْ هُوَ الرِّعَايَ الَّذِي يُرَاعِ الْمَحْفُوظِ this word hafiz me uh, comes from hifth, which is protection, that which is offered to the one that is being protected. In other words, these angels, in this case, we said they're not protecting us necessarily, they're protecting the information, all of our deeds. They're guarding all of our actions and our, our behaviors, so all of them are thoroughly recorded. Now, the second thing that I should note here is why use the word kul and not use the word jami'ah. You see, the ayah says, in kullu nafsin. And in the Quran, jami'ah is also used. Now, jami'ah, kul means every. And jami' means all, all together. So what's the difference between them? You see, if you use the word jami' it implies that the people are together. And only then they have a guardian over them. But kul means each and every one in their own individual place. It, regardless of whether we're together or not, this is something that's, that's taking place. So jami' for example, is used in the case of the, the next life and resurrection because there, in fact, we will first be herded all together. وَإِن كُلُّ لَمَّا جَمِيعُ لَدَيْنَا مُحْضَرُونَ Jami' is used. But here, Kul is used essentially. Okay? The other thing here is the word alayha preceding. In other words, Allah does not say in kullu nafsin lamma hafidun alayha. Alayha is not at the end, alayha is in the middle. This is what's called taqdeem. The benefit of knowing that is that every one of us has specifically been assigned an angel or specifically been assigned a hafid that is for us. That's their job. Their job is us. As opposed to some other person, they have another angel assigned to them and it's very, very particular to every single human being. This is part of the qadr and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word nafs is associated with that which is inside of us. The word insan is of course the whole human being, but the word alludes to more of forgetfulness because it comes from nasiya. So its theme has to do with forgetfulness. And we'll see how that applies in the next ayah. But this is about secrecy because the nafs thinks they, they, they have some things that can keep a secret that nobody is going to find out. But Allah says, no, you have a guardian over you. Even that nafs that is known for keeping secrets, none of its secrets are safe because there's a hafid over it. Alright, so then inshallah ta'ala we continue, فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Then the human being should take a deep look. And the word fa here, first of all, it doesn't say liyanzur, it says falyanzur. The fa means then as a result. Then as a result. Meaning if a person realizes, has given thought to the fact that there are these brilliant stars that are a witness against him, that the entire sky, if you don't see the stars, it's cloudy. Allah didn't just take an oath by a tariq that sometimes you see, sometimes you don't see. He took it for the, the whole sky first. As sama, the sky is a witness. And then on top of that, if you see it, the tariq is also a witness. And najmu thaqib is a witness. If you've pondered over these witnesses, and if you've pondered over the reality that there's a guardian over you, that is recording all of your deeds, then it should lead you to think, why is this, so, why is this not far-fetched? Why is this not, not a, you know, a fantasy thing that we believe in? Because the, the average non-believer, when he hears this, he thinks we're talking about some fairy tale, some mythology of angels around us and you know, this, these stars are watching over us. Come on, they're just inanimate objects in space. They're nothing. It's just empty air. It's the vastness of space. Nothing's a witness. So they think this is the figment of our imagination. Allah Azza wa Jal calls this disbeliever to reflect in a different way. He calls him to say, Allah says, فَلْيَنظُرْ Then, if, if you're skeptical about all of this, then the human being should look carefully. They should look and reflect carefully. Nazara is to stare at something and to think about it. Like for example, when Musa alayhi salam took out his hand and it was white, right? فَإِذَا هِيَ بَيْضَاءُ لِلنَّاظِرِينَ it turned white for those to stare, meaning people couldn't take their eyes off of the thing. Right? They're just staring at it. They're just, what is that? How did that get here? Allah uses that word for us. In other words, we should reflect deeply, look carefully into. And then the irony of the wording here, that's, that's part of the imagery of the, of the text is, we said darkness, secrecy, hiding, nafs is something that hides. Right? The, the nighttime, tariq, alluding to the nighttime, something that hides. Allah says, look into what you were created from. Let the human being look into from, from what he was created. And the word for human being used is insan, because the human being tends to forget what he was created from. 
The human being become, gains credentials or wealth or status or a name or power or authority in the earth and forgets that he has some very pathetic, not just humble, pathetic beginnings, a dirty fluid that people wash off of their clothes. That's where his beginning is. So, فَلْيَنْظُرِ insan. Then you see the word mimma in the language. You see, normally we say mimma with an alif there. But this has been shortened mimma. Mimma is a kind of tasgheer, also taqseer. It's been reduced, it's reducing the meaning of the word. In other words, how small a thing. Even in the language it's been reduced because what he's been created from is something very small, very minuscule, very insignificant. So much so it doesn't even deserve to be called mimma khuliq. It should just be called mimma khuliq. Mimma khuliq. So, what is this return that Allah Azza wa speaks of? Most of the Mufassirun comment that this return is of course bringing human, returning the human being after he is dead back to life. But there's something really beautiful and profound in the use of this word here because Allah speaks of the human being, the fluid going into the woman in the form of a, you know, basically just a fluid and then what comes out of her womb is a human being. So what is entered is, a, is something dead and what is returned is something fully formed. Something minuscule goes in and something profound comes out. Allah returns it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way Allah says, if Allah can produce this return, after this fluid has gone in and turned out into a human being, Allah is capable then also in, of returning the human being from whatever form. If, if He can create the human being out of water, water and return him out of the womb, then the earth, the womb of the earth, will yield him back no matter what he turns into. So the earth is going to be talked about as a womb as the ayat continue. The word innahu here illustrates izalat al-shak. What that implies is that there are people who are not willing to give this thought consideration. They'll go as far as to say, yes, the birth is miraculous. They'll go that far. But they were not willing to take that next step. Allah Azza wa is giving them that next step. In ala raj'ihi laqadir. In the eloquence of the surah, we don't find inna Allah ala raj'ihi laqadir. And usually, you know, so it says certainly he is capable of returning it. But the word he, a pronoun, is used typically when the noun is already mentioned. Like if you're telling someone a story and you say, once upon a time there was a man, the next sentence doesn't say the man went out to town, it says he went out to town, right? So the word he would be an illustration of a noun that was already mentioned. Interestingly, the word Allah hasn't occurred in the surah. Again, keeping his name secret because that's part of the theme, enshrouding his name in secrecy in this surah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that's part of the theme of the surah and also illustrates Allah Azza wa Jal's displeasure of the ones who have forgotten him. May Allah make, not make us from them. In the previous surah, he said, Innahu huwa yubdi wa yu'id. Exactly the same subject. No doubt it is he who initiates and brings back. Just like he initiates the creation of that fluid and brings it back a human being and initiated the human being's existence on this earth and will bring it back in the next life after we are gone. Similarly, he says, Innahu ala raj'ihi laqadir. Now that this has been illustrated, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the next conclusion. يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair, The day on which secrets will be thoroughly tested and left out. You know, something that is pulled out and exposed to everybody. This is for what the word bala is used for, not just for testing, but for completely exposing. So Allah says when secrets, sarair, and by the way, the word sarair comes from the singular sarira. Now there are two words in the root. There's sir, sir, and the plural of sir, which means secret, is asrar. Right? But then there's the word sarira, and the plural of that is sarair. And sarira is a very well-guarded secret. Sir is a secret. But a sarira is like it's got mubalaghan. It's a really well-guarded secret that nobody could find out about. It was protected by the ones who didn't want it exposed. Allah says they will be thrown out in the open, like, you know, open, and open access information. Allah Azza wa Jal says, it begins with another oath, which is very similar to the beginning oaths of the previous surah. He says, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ I swear by the sky, and by that, all which is above, that possesses the feature of returning. ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ Which is known for returning. That is used when something is replete with a feature. So the sky is being described as one that has the feature of returning something. So what does the sky return? We learn in tafsir that the sky returns with the rain over and over and over again. That's one implication of وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ It's complemented even more beautifully because when the rain comes, it penetrates the earth or it flows and it becomes parts of rivers and oceans and then it, some of it dries up and it goes back up and it returns again and it goes back up and it returns against the same water that is cycling. So Allah says, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ Subhanallah. 
Another thing here that's been mentioned by, uh, by more recent commentaries like Sheikh Zanadani who does a lot of science and Quran kind of research. He says, look, the ozone layer we know now, radiation comes from outer space and it gets sent back from our, the first layer of the sky here. And telecommunications, you have you know, the, the first layer, the, the waves bounce back and that's how satellite and cell phone communication takes place. So there's that al-raja. Wallahu ta'ala alam. But if we know classically, what this is referring to is the water cycling. The water cycling. So the sky is known what was Samai that Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.